can't be alone. Welcome to the modern way. I'm trying to be somebody I'm not, but it's not what I want. And tell me there's another way. All of the lights are chased and now faded. All the cheap feels were only time wasted. Tell me why society's plan to define who I am. Surely there's a higher way. Stereotype to decide who I am It never knew me anyway I'm over trying to find the next high Cause the high never lasts I'm gonna go another way All of the lights I chased and now faded Till it was right, the times they are changing Tell me why society's plan should define who I am Surely there's a highway All of my best friends are still Hi everyone, good to see you all. How was your week, past week? God, I hope you, I hope you all had a, a great week. And you know what? Today is Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy Valentine's as well, okay? And also, you make sure when you see your mom, say Happy Valentine's Day, <laughs> all right? Guys, it is a great day to worship again. And uh, well, we're gonna get started here uh, very shortly, but let me pray. And then we will enter into our service today. All right, let's close. Let's clo close our eyes and let's uh, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, thank you so much. Uh, Father, we uh, we come to you again, Lord Father. I know it is a, a zoo, it is a online worship. If we feel distant, but F Father, we know that you are with us. Actually, you are just sitting next to us, Lord Father. Uh, Father, uh, through, through being with you today, Lord Father, uh, let us just, uh, would you just stir our hearts, Lord Father, so that we will, we will long for you, uh, we will yearn for you, Lord Father, so, so that, Lord Father, we will know you more through today's worship, and we will gain more faith through it, Lord Father. And also as Pastor Esther delivers a message, Lord Father, Lord, be with her, so that she will speak for you, and she will be the witness for you, Lord. Thank you. With all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Are you ready to praise? All right, let's get started. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold it right there. Do you have your backstage pass? All right. Go on back. Ba, 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 ba. Bible 
what's in there too it's in the room. any burning question distinct honor to introduce the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, John Roberts, to administer the presidential oath to the next President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Joseph Robinette Biden, Jr., do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability. Will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> As I start the sermon, I show you one video. And this video is very special because uh, I wanted to emphasize how United States start this nation. You see, in this video, all of United States presidents, when they take their pres presidential duty, they promise, and when they raise their hand, right hand, they place their left hand on the Bible. And they said, I will take this presidential duty. And the last word, they said, help me, God. So I'm so happy to see this nation is found, uh, built on that foundation. And you know what? Not only uh, on inauguration day all across the united states every courtroom whenever the witness uh, when they stand in front of judges they lay their left hand on the bible and they promise i will tell the truth and i think this is really symbol that the bible is the truth do you remember last week we learned that God was, the Bible was inspired by God. Even though it is written by man, God, he breathed his life into the every word. So we learned that Bible, author of the Bible is God himself. Last week we learned that. So I want to emphasize again, the Bible is ultimate truth. We believe every truth is from the Bible because we believe it's the Word of God, right? So today, I want to talk about why, why we should read the Bible. But before that, uh, I want to have kind of review time so that you can have clear concept about the Bible. So I prepare a video. So after we watch this video, I will keep talking about why we should read the Bible. So this video is telling us what is the Bible, 
who wrote it and how do we know it's true. So let's watch the video. What is the Bible? Who wrote it? And how do we know it's true? The Bible is the most important book ever written. It's a record of how God created the earth, animals, and humans. It tells the stories of the earliest people and their lives. It details the life of the most important man to ever walk the earth, Jesus, God's only Son. It gives us practical examples and information about how God wants us to live our lives today. It reveals a future plan for every person who has ever lived by describing God's kingdom both in heaven and on earth. The Bible is actually made up of 66 smaller books. The first 39 books are called the Old Testament, and the remaining 27 books are called the New Testament. You can read stories, letters, songs, poetry, and prayers in this amazing book. Forty different people wrote the Bible over a period of about 1,500 years. Second Timothy tells us all scripture is inspired by God. This means that God spoke to the authors through their hearts and minds, telling them to write down exactly what he wanted to say. Some of the writers were personal friends of Jesus, and they recorded events about him many years later. Through the Holy Spirit, God miraculously helped them to clearly remember details about Jesus that had happened many years before. We know the Bible is true for many reasons. First, many locations described in the Bible, countries, cities, seas, and mountains, for example, are real places you can visit today. Second, other authors who lived at the same time wrote about the same historical events and people of the Bible. These other writings confirm and support the details the Bible tells us about. Third, the Bible has told us about future events that have come true. These are called prophecies, and there are even more exciting prophecies yet to come. Without the Bible, we would not know about God, Jesus, or the wonderful plans our Heavenly Father has in store for all of us. We are very thankful for this inspiring book that we can read and study anytime. And last week, I said, if we know the Bible was inspired by God, we need to read the Bible. Right? So today I want to emphasize that again. We need to read the Bible. And everybody know that. We need to read it and study it. We need to know the Word of God. But actually, it is very hard to read it. And I don't know why many people, they have so trouble when they read the Bible and distracted. So today, I want to emphasize it again. We need to read the Bible. But before that, I want to explain why why we should read a Bible. If, you, if we know why we should read a Bible, I think it is easier to read it ourselves, right? So, number one, why? Why we should read a Bible? The Bible tells us how to be saved. That's why we, read, we need to read a Bible. There is no other book to give us this knowledge, how can we be saved? It is so important. There are many, many, many popular best book, bestseller books, but there is only one book who could tell us how to be saved. Do you remember I teach you so many times how, how we can be saved? We can be saved only by Jesus. Do you remember? Because Bible tells us that way. Jesus, Jesus himself, he told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He said that. And every Bible books guide us how to be saved. So we need to read the Bible. Again, there is no other book who can explain how to be saved. The second thing, why? Why we should read a Bible? Be, uh, we should read a Bible because the Bible teaches, uh, teaches us what's really true about God and Jesus. There are so many religions and there are many people who says, 
I know God. And they say different things. And they insist, I'm, I'm right. This is true. Everybody, they insist. So we are so confused, which is really true about God. We don't know. But students, remember, we have Bible. This is the book who can tell us about God, who God is, and who Jesus is. If someone talks about God to you, you need to listen, and you need to check it in the Bible. Is it true what he said about God? If it is really fit in the Bible, yes, that's true. But even though the people talk about God and they said, I'm talking about God, but if it is different, uh, if it, their saying is different from the Bible, actually, their say, saying is not true. Because we have this book inspired by God. So this is the only book we can learn about who God is and who Jesus is. So don't be deceived by other people if they talk about different things from the Bible. And you said, no, that's not true, because Bible tells us about God. Okay? And the third thing, we should read the Bible because the Bible is our instruction manual for life. This is so good book. And there are so many wonderful stories and poems and songs and many things. Letter, it's really good to read. And God gave us this book to give us instruction manual for our lives. Do you remember last week we learned the Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, it is so useful for our life. Can we open the Bible again? Can we read it that verse again? I hope you memorize this verse. So let's open it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And Dominic asked me which version you are using, and I answered NIRV. Okay, guys, if you have other version, that's okay. But Pastor Esther usually uh, use an IRV version. So if you have that version, I think uh, if you have the Bible from our church, yes, that's an IRV. So open it. Chapter, I mean, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. Okay. Can we read it together? Even you are alone at all? Let's read it together. Ready? Set? Go. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. Amen. I want to read it again. Can we read it again? Let's do it. Okay, ready, set, go. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what, what is right. Amen. So, Bible tells us it is so useful. And basically, it is instructional manual for our lives. It tells us what we should do, like obey to your parents and be diligent and be wise and do, do, do this. Or Bible tells us what we should not do it. Don't lie, don't steal, don't hate, don't do these things. God gives, the Bible gives us really clear instruction for our lives. So. If you want to get wisdom, it is good to read the Bible. And you know what the manual means? When you play game, you need to read the manual, right? And you need to follow the manual so that the game works. Just like that. When we follow this manual, our life 
works. So now, finally, we learned about the Bible. Can I wrap it? The first of all, I hope you remember the Bible was inspired by God, even though it is written by man. And because of that, the Bible is the truth. And I said, that's why we should read the Bible. And I explained why, why we should read the Bible. The first of, the most of all, first of all, we should read the Bible because the Bible tells us how to be saved. And the second thing, Bible tells us who God is. And only Bible tells us who God is. And the third thing, the Bible is instruct, instructional manual for our lives. So guys, let's read it. Let's study it. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us about the Bible. We want to stand firm on your word. Even though other people talk different way, we will not be shaken and we will just trust in your word and we will take your word as the truth. And we will try to follow all this instruction because you told us it is useful for us. Lord, please give us strength and the power so that we can continue to read it, study it, and meditate it, and apply it into our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's announcement time. Let's welcome our team Jangnim. Ready? Set? Go! Announcement! 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 <laughs> Alright, hey guys. Hey! Before I start, there's a little trivial knowledge for you. The Pastor Esther mentioned about the Bible that's that used for uh, President B uh, Biden's inauguration. Well, did you know that that Bible, that particular Bible that was used, belongs to his family since 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 the uh, 1800s? Wow, can you believe that? 1800s. That book is almost 2000. No, not 2000. 200 years old. <laughs> well, I think that's very special. Very, very special. So, well, there's a little trivial knowledge for you, okay? Well, as I mentioned, today is Valentine's Day, right? As you know, on Valentine's Day, love is in the air, right? Love is everywhere. You can see my background, there is love everywhere, right? But, but, the Bible tells us that God is love, right? So, well, we know that God is everywhere. That means His love is everywhere too right and you know what not only on, not only on a valentine's day but his love is available every single day right yes it is very very important to important for you to know that god is love he's present and his love is available to you daily every every day so, so remember that all right and also some of you have received that special Surprise gift uh, yesterday, a little uh, Valentine's goodie bag, right? Uh, well, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you brush, okay? <laughs> but I know some of you have not received that, but you know what? It will get to you, okay? I know there are some, you know, the transportation issues, but they will get to you today, all right? Hope you enjoy it. And also, a uh, couple more things here. Oh my goodness, hold on. Okay. And also, yeah, speaking of the Bible reading, we got to read Bible every day, yes. But if you want to do it as a group on Wednesday nights, Josiah Club, don't forget, 7 o'clock, all right? I know many of you are joining us, and it's a really having a great time doing that. So join us and be blessed on Wednesdays, all right? Um, and also, uh, sixth graders, your DT is coming up. Okay, uh, it will be on the 19th, okay, <laughs> it will be on the 19th, 4 o'clock, okay, 4 o'clock, uh, it'll be a fun time, and you know what, it'll be a face-to-face -face DT for, for the first time in 365 days, alright, so it'll be a fun, it'll be a great time, and it'll be a very blessing time, alright, okay, Guys, let's do our uh, Lord's Prayer, and then we will finish for today. 
All right. And you know what? Since it's a Valentine's, I have my pink Bible. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Are you guys ready? All right. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debt debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, guys. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed, enjoyed and be blessed by this uh, uh, sermon and our uh, worship. And, uh, well, until we see you again next week, stay safe, stay good, and take care, right? Okay, bye-bye.